Hello and welcome to today's webinar. We have an exciting lineup of experts joining us for today's session on the journey of the customer service transformation. Organizations empowered by intelligent customer service increase advocacy and loyalty to their brands by creating effortless service experiences. Microsoft has embarked on a journey of digital transformation to modernize customer engagement. Today, Caroline Fu, Microsoft's Customer and Partner Experience Lead for Asia Pacific, will share her experience and insights on how Microsoft modernized existing customer service and operations functions, and she'll also share examples of the underlying technologies in place that empower that transformation. We are also joined by Microsoft customer Andrew Edwards, Managing Director of Go Ahead Singapore, and Microsoft partner Huang Fei, General Manager of MNG Solutions, who will share Go Ahead's success story and experience in modernizing customer service. I'd like to remind everyone that this is an interactive presentation, so if you have any questions at all for the speakers, please feel free to enter these in the Q&A box on the screen at any time during this session. Caroline, I will now hand over to you. Thank you, Barbara. It is my pleasure to be here today. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Many of us know digital transformation is not simply about technology. It requires business leaders, including customer experience leaders like yourself, to re-envision existing business models and embrace a different way of bringing together people, data, and processes to create value for our customers. My ambition with this session today is to share why we are transforming our customer experience in a world of digital transformation, how we are approaching this in Microsoft, what has changed for us, and what are our key learnings so far. Digital transformation is happening everywhere, and with it comes both opportunity and threat. Everywhere we look, we see evidence of depth and pace of digital changing and disrupting our landscape. According to the World Economic Forum, the combined value to society and industry of digital transformation could be greater than 100 trillion over the next 10 years. The combined effects of digital technologies, whether it's mobile, cloud, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, among others, are accelerating progress exponentially. Now, on the flip side, the Fortune 500 list show us one barometer of how quickly the tides can change. Today, 52% of the large companies which was in the Fortune 500 since year 2000 are now gone. What is even more alarming is majority of these companies would not exist in a meaningful way 10 to 15 years from now. We would all agree that we live in incredible time. We just have to look around us and we find new technologies rapidly transforming the ways in which we live work, learn, and play. Digital platforms are connecting buyers and sellers in new ways. Blockchains having the potential to transform relationships and trust. 3D printing having the potential to transform value chain to deliver anything personalized and on demand. Artificial intelligence and robotics giving us the capabilities to be superhuman in our minds and bodies. These are just some of the extraordinary new capabilities that enable us to innovate beyond what we can even imagine today. At this time of change, improving experience along the customer journey becomes even more essential. According to McKinsey and the company, efforts to focus on customer experience can boost revenue by up to 15%, increase customer satisfaction by 20%, while at the same time, lower the cost of serving our customer by as much as 20%. Now comes the good news. This puts the role of customer experience leaders and practitioners like ourselves on the front and center of an important competitive differentiator. Many companies have realized or are starting to realize the importance of reorientating and reprioritizing their business around what really matters, our customer experience. The biggest change to customer experience at the moment is the rise of digital interactions, enabling customers to engage with the organization through mobile and social channels opens up new avenues of communication. 
As such, technology plays an even more important role in organizations' customer experience initiatives. In the Gartner Customer Experience Survey in 2017, 84% of respondents anticipated an increase in spending in customer experience enabling technologies such as customer analytics, web content management, business process management, master data management, multi-channel customer service, and UX design. The survey also reported that 50% of respondents have implemented or plan to adopt technologies such as machine learning and virtual customer assistance. Going forward, artificial intelligence is expected to transform the customer experience to deeper understanding of our customers' needs. I talked about the drivers of change. Now let me shift gear to how we approach this in Microsoft. As our CEO Satya Nadella said, obsessing over our customers is everyone's job. With that, he was referring to over 100,000 Microsoft employees in 62 subsidiaries across 191 countries. This clearly sets the tone and the direction for everyone across our organization, not just our customer and partner experience team, or our customer service and support team, but also include sales and marketing, engineering, finance, HR, legal, and all other business functions. Essentially, we embark on a journey of reviewing every aspect of our business from engineering to seller compensation to better meet the expectations of our customers and partners. We were looking at transformation at scale, at delivering exceptional experiences to both customers and partners is extremely critical to our long-term growth and success. For the customer and partner experience community in Microsoft, we leverage on a framework here. First, we actively listen and understand our customers and partners' needs. Second, we convert this insight into practice to deliver exceptional value propositions and to strengthen relationships based on relevancy and trust. Third, we put in place the customer service and support experience framework to empower, help, and advise our customers. Now, let me illustrate with some very specific examples. Listening. When it comes to the voices of customers and partners, we have many listening opportunities. From 1 million consumer customers to 48 million Xbox Live members to 1.2 billion Microsoft Office users and over 75 million small and medium businesses and many more. We put in place many different listening mechanisms across customers and partners' touch points. We gather and analyze the feedback and the signals they give us. We bring this data to deliver deep insights, and several themes started to emerge. Example, customers told us that digital experience is at the heart of digital transformation. They told us that they expect something different from us, no longer selling them just software or even services, but to help them realize their digital transformation. They asked that we make it easier to work with us and our partners. They needed more technical help as our cloud world rushes forward and product capabilities change daily. They asked that we understand their industry better, their competitors, and their business issues. We realized we were not set up to enable long-term success for every customer to achieve their visions. So our own team, even our own team, to us to revisit how we run our business and enable them to grow and succeed in this new world. So all this collective feedback guided the way we approach our own digital transformation. We keep asking ourselves these questions. How do we help customers to get value faster? Where do we invest our resources? What skills and behaviors do we need to better serve our customers? How do we differentiate ourselves? To help us answer these questions, we rely very heavily on deep insights, the customers' voices and feedback that we've gathered. We have to leverage our modern technologies, such as Power BI, which allow a team not only to see the data from a single pane of glass, but also to give us the capability to quickly provide interactive reports back to the business to make critical businesses' decisions to ensure that we stay on track. And given our team is distributed across countries and different time zones, we have to provide them with modern productivity tools 
such as Microsoft Teams in Microsoft 365, a digital hub that brings conversations, meetings, call, content, and applications together in one place to enable time to collaborate effectively and the team with impact. One example of where and how we convert the insights we gather into practice is customer-driven engineering. One of the programs we have in place is our Windows Insiders program, which allows any of our customers to join millions of Windows users around the world to give us feedback, to give them directly to our engineers to help deliver of the version of Windows that better suits their needs. Now, this program also extends to many of our product portfolio, such as the Xbox Insiders, as well as the Microsoft Office Insider program. The second example I would like to share is how we change the way we engage and support our customers. We're using machine learning to surface customer sentiment across assisted support survey verbatims, chat, phone, and social channels, and identify additional customer needs. This is voice of customer insight beyond the traditional channels we leverage. The voice of the field through our engagement with your team and other field stakeholders, telemetry, customer satisfaction, survey scores, and case data we use to drive product improvements with the engineering group. And one of the key themes from our machine learning insights is that customers are asking for more self-serve options. So as a result, our customer service and support team drove an initiative to adopt virtual agents as you can see here, to support and empower our customers who are more satisfied with self-help experience across our support entry points. Now, this is now a very good stage way for me to move on to the next slide. At Microsoft, our customer service and support team supports a wide range of customers, from advertisers to consumers to large enterprises from an individual connecting their camera to OneDrive to a security agency conducting data mining to protect individual countries. We support all these customers all around the world in 191 countries and support them in 41 different languages. We are a diverse team who connects with 56 million customers through assistive support each year. We also engage our customers through community support forum, which are monitored by us, by leveraging on other experts in the community to provide solutions to specific issues for our customers. So in this new world of cloud and mobile, in a world where our customers have high expectations, in a world where advances in technology create lower barriers to entry, the Microsoft Customer Service and Support Team is on the front line supporting, nurturing, and growing our customers. And the team leverages on the customer service and support experience framework, which you can see here, which is focused on empowering, helping, and advising our customers. The focus is very simple, to deliver on these three core customer experience as outlined here. Empower me to prevent and resolve my issues. Help me quickly when I need your expertise. Advise me how I can achieve more. The team here has very purposefully stated these experiences in the perspective of our customers by design to remind us that our customers, what our customers want and what they're expecting from us. I talk a lot about what we do on stage, which is pretty much what the customer can see and experience which determine whether they want to come back. Now I like to shift the lens to backstage where it gets a little bit more complex. The Microsoft Asia Pacific Operations Center, or APOC, is one of our four Microsoft regional oper operations centers worldwide. It manages the order to cash cycle for volume licensing, partner and developer program, enterprise services, Microsoft Dynamics operations, and many more. And they operate across 18 countries in Asia PAC, including Japan. So this includes contract processing, invoicing, channel incentive, field service support, channel readiness communications, credit collections, and the list go on. APOC enables billions of dollars of revenue annually for Microsoft in Asia and remains as one of Microsoft's key assets in the region. Partner and customer revenue processing is huge and it spans over 12 business units to 75 billion revenue per year. And these complexities are compounded when you have to manage over 257 countries, over 90 SOX controls, and international regulations that we need to comply to. 
So very frequently we have to ask ourselves, what are the customers and partners telling us? What are the feedback from our field team? And very consistently, they're telling us that engagement with Microsoft is sometimes very highly complex and it's impacting the customer value and ability to achieve more. Especially for our customers with multiple cloud products, they give us very constructive feedback that they get passed around to multiple departments before their needs can be met. So the team see a huge opportunity for us to better align our customer needs across support, sales and operations, and to enable our operations team to deliver with reliability, repeatability, and scalability. In, in a recent COO roundtable here in Singapore, our operations director for the region shared the implementation of the solution management and incident care tool. They work with respective teams across the business, and the tool leverages not only on Dynamics 365, but also on artificial intelligent technologies to optimize case routing, embedding customer sentiment analysis, and language translation. With this automation support, it enables the ops team to optimize our services to the highest level of predictability, which helps us drive improved customer satisfaction. The initial results have been very encouraging. Since implementation, our operations team have saved up to 2,000 hours per month with the automation, validation, and creation of manual orders. This does not only help drive optimization across our off-stage operations, it has a very positive impact to both our customer and partner experiences in doing business with us. Indeed, customer experience is the sum of all interactions between the customer and supplier over the lifetime of their relationship. It occurs every time a customer has an interaction with all about Microsoft, whether we are from support, operations, sales, marketing, pitch out legal finance. To share with you another quote from our CEO, he said, every one of us every day gets an opportunity to touch customers. That's one universal truth. All of us have customer presence. And customer experience is really about leadership. It's about the choices we make, about how we want to grow and how we would not grow. And when companies make decisions, they always move in directions of the customers. And the decision they make will mark what they will become. Our collective decisions and actions tell another kind of story to our customers and partners about who we are, what we value, how we choose to show up, how steadfast we are in our commitment to them. It sends signal to people how much we thought about their lives. That's what shows up on the internet. That's what drives and fuels our growth. It's not about what we say we'll do. It is about our behaviors that defines who we are. Customer experience is indeed about the entire journey, and we need to continue to get closer to the customer and push more accountability throughout our organization. We need to bring people to the table as a bigger whole to address the needs of our customers. And doing what you say you're going to do, not only saying the word I'm sorry, but repair the emotional connections and put customer back together again. I'd like to conclude today's presentation with some thoughts of the questions I asked earlier and on what I have learned along this journey. Creating great customer experience can't happen unless your culture is right. Building a culture of empathy is key to understanding what your customers really want, and that's key to your success. When you have happy employees, your customers feel it. You connect the dots, you deliver the one company experience, and when you take care of employees when something goes wrong, that's a hollow effect that you show up to your customer with empathy and urgency to provide a solution. Use storytelling in the organization to create and sustain a customer-obsessed culture. What are we learning from trying new things and making mistakes, and how are, we use, how are we using those learnings to our future benefit? Unlock leadership commitment. Ensure you have full support from your leadership team. Your customer needs should be at the center of all the decision-making process and that approach should flow down into your organization from the top. Last but not the least, digital transformation can help you reinvent your customer experience. And as you think about your future, make sure you understand the digital needs of your customers. 
Let me say a word at a more operational level. Looking at what we have learned about the how, it really boils down to five things. It's about taking personal ownership, empowerment, sustaining a learning culture, communications, and a sense of urgency. To be successful, you have to create more than good intentions. It needs new habits and a commitment to stick to them. Every day in my role, I challenge myself and my team to exemplify the culture we are trying to achieve. And it's hard in the day-to-day -day battle of priorities. It is about adopting simple, repeatable behaviors that convert these good intentions into great results. And Microsoft, our mission is to empower every person and organization on the planet to achieve more. Our mission acts as a North Star in everything we do, every product choice we make, how we show up with our customers, it's not just a set of words. When we talk about empowering people, we simply mean that with the right tools, anyone can become anything. And perhaps on the planet is the most important and interesting idea in our mission. Our technology does not just touch the folks in our headquarters or the Northwest or even the Western Hemisphere. At Microsoft, we aim to empower every person in every organization on the planet. And for us at Microsoft, we do want everyone in our organization to be customer obsessed, to keep a constant focus on increasing customer facing time, create a culture of in-the-moment coaching between managers and their team, celebrating team and partner success rather than just a one word seller, and at the end of the day, the true engine of digital transformation is cultural change. Thank you very much. This is the end of my presentation. Now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce again our customers, Andrew Atwood, Managing Director of Go Ahead Singapore. Andrew, welcome to the webinar. Now, may I invite you to introduce yourself and Go Ahead Singapore? Thank you, Caroline. Um, so, I'm Andrew Edwards. I'm the Managing Director for Go Ahead Singapore, and um, we run Public Singapore Bus Market. So, just to introduce Go Ahead as an organization, um, Go Ahead comes from 1987, um, where we, um, in, during privatisation in the UK, we um, bought out um, a bus company in the north of England, and since then, <coughs> we have grown to um, rail and bus across the UK. Um, <coughs> in that time, we've become London's largest bus operator, and we run two rail, rail organisations, GTR and South Eastern, which have the high-speed rail, rail link between Kent and London. We are the largest um, operator of passenger journeys on rail in the UK, and since then, we uh, are, are now on our journey um, across the world. We, uh, we've run won some rail contracts in Germany, we've launched in Ireland, and in 2016, we went on our first international journey to Singapore. So in Singapore, we um, took on the challenge and um, launched the PT Singapore's second bus contracting model to be released where we um, fly routes across the east of Singapore into the city centre. With over 400 vehicles, 1,000 colleagues, and 28 bus routes to, um, to run through out of two interchanges and one large depot, we um, have the challenge of ensuring that um, we run a reliable service for the, the public of Singapore, and also ensuring that we um, maintain top, um, top standards within our organisation. Thank you very much, Andrew. Now, I'd like to also uh, introduce Huang Fei, uh, General Manager from our partner uh, m and Solutions in Singapore. Huang Fei, could you introduce yourself? Thanks, Kathleen. <coughs> this is uh, Huang Fei from uh, m and Solutions. Uh, m and Solutions is a Microsoft Go ERP partner and the cloud provider. Uh, we uh, have the product experience since 1999. Uh, and uh, we are one-stop solution provider for Thank you for Caroline. Thank you, Wang Fei. So now it's time to take some questions from the audience. Uh, let me take a quick look. First question, um, that's for you, Andrew. So what are some of the challenges uh, you say you face when you first come into a mature market like Singapore? So, well, obviously you want a reliable bus service um, in the market we enter. However, one of our big challenges was to find a solution um, to save time and improve productivity um, for our, both our internal and external stakeholders um, to deliver seamless um, customer experience. This is why we worked with MNG to um, assist us with finding mm -hmm. a way of um, 
having the best solution um, to manage our data with um, Dynamic 365. So what we were looking at is that we had four areas that we really needed to, um, to deal with in this area, which was customer feedback, mm -hmm. large amounts of frontline data from staff, mm -hmm. uh, about our staff, sorry, and management, management reporting and inventory management. So what we, what we did was essentially we've looked at ways of starting for, um, the flow from very start to finish mm -hmm. um, to give our customers um, the most efficient way of um, reporting through to us, which then allows us to then really pull data and understand um, our customer needs. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, the key challenges for doing this is that, uh, first of all, we need to um, coach our commuters into actually um, feeding back to us through, through our portal. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second part of this was then ensuring our management team were trained on the system, um, which would then deliver um, the key to our success, which was having all data in one place and being able to actually um, report on all the information that is coming through, feeding back and reviewing. Thank you, Andrew. It certainly sounds like a huge effort how do we ensure that employees at Go Ahead Singapore adapted to utilizing the software so they can successfully optimize its traction? So training was key to this. Mm -hmm. um, by training our employees um, on the system, what this enabled us to do was um, ensure that they had the confidence to, and the understanding to, um, to use um, our CRM system. Um, from that, what, they were able, what we were able to do was then run reports and actually analyze data that was going into it and compare it to what was actually happening within our organization. Mm -hmm. Once we'd done this, we were able to really feed back to our management team and ensure that they really understood the importance of it. I mean, one, one real good example of this is that our bus captains get a bonus each month for wow. their, their performance okay. um, based on their driving standards, based on their attendance record, and based on our overall performance of the organization. So every time they have a type of incident, it, that is recorded into our CRM system. Mm -hmm. If that's not recorded in there correctly, then we are potentially paying out incorrect amounts of um, money to our bus captains each month. So by ensuring that our management team are putting this in correctly, this mm -hmm. ensures that um, we pay correctly, and we were able to use this as a good tool to feed back to our management team so they then knew that the importance of getting this right the first time. All right, you must have a lot of very happy employees with the bonuses. Um, we, we do, because they perform very well in Singapore. <laughs> All right. But how long, did, how long has it taken you to realize some of the customer service returns uh, from the implementation of Dynamics 365? Well, really, from, from the customer experience part of it, um, it was immediate. So as soon as it went in, um, we, uh, we launched it, and the commuters were straight away able mm -hmm. to use our website to actually communicate with us. Um, from that, that has flowed all the way through our system and without any paper going anywhere. So straight away, we were able to improve productivity um, of our management team who were dealing with all of these, um, all of these um, things that were coming through to them. Um, so we believe that as soon as we introduced this, um, we probably saved about 30% of time mm -hmm. just through reducing paperwork and reducing the amount of contact people need to make with each other to pass information from one place to another. That's impressive, 30%. We, we think so, yeah. Um, yeah, and it certainly has um, given our customers experience team more opportunity to do more proactive work instead mm -hmm. of being reactive the whole time. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe I would uh, ask the same questions of Wang Fei, I mean, given that <coughs> you are the implementation pro uh, partner here. Maybe you could um, share with us a little bit more about, about how, how you think we can realize the customer service returns. Yeah, <coughs> That's, um, uh, we are Microsoft partners. Uh, we are happy in this case of the go ahead to do the digital transform. Uh, we are, know the Microsoft Dynamics 5 CRM is very, have very common safe features as an all box. However, of course, we need the customer uh, as the very clear objective to define this is not only IT project, also involve the business <coughs> streamline process. Mm -hmm. So uh, with the, the customer uh, management, the strong support, mm -hmm. with the, the, all the effort to put in from the customer, 
we are quite successfully to implement this project. Thank you very much, Wang Fei. Now, next question uh, from the audience uh, goes back to you, Andrew. Go ahead and enjoy the benefits of this collaboration and this success. It will be rooted all the way back in the selection of the right partner. So we ask about how, sh how, do you, how should you be looking, what should brands be looking for when they are selecting partners to collaborate with to reach your CX goals? Okay, so I suppose there's three areas to this, um, three key points to make uh, when you're selecting a partner to, um, to deliver your um, objectives and goals within the organization for new technology. First of all is find a partner with really good experience mm -hmm. because that way they are able to um, talk to you, talk you through all the all the systems and how um, and how they've done it in different organisations um, throughout um, throughout their careers. The the second part is looking at an organisation's track record as well. Um, what we did was before we um, worked with MNG, um, we took on took on their proposal and then we went and spoke to their customers. Um, from other industries mm -hmm. and we got their feedback um, which obviously was positive because we then collaborated with um, MNG to, um, to deliver this solution to us. And the third thing is use a partner that knows the industry you're in. If they know the industry you're in, they're able to offer you solutions um, much easier than, than an organization that really um, is seeing you for the first time. So MNG understood the bus industry understood what we were about and what we were trying to achieve and they were able to support us along our journey to um, to really deliver what we were expecting. Thank you. So in summary, good experience, organization track record, as well as um, understanding the industry and, and being relevant to your business. Yes. The three criteria. I think so, yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think next question uh, from the audience, uh, that's to you, Wang Fei. How can potential partners look to evidence that they are a good fit for a certain uh, customer service project? So, so I know, um, as we know, the GoHe is the customer uh, service oriented uh, the companies. Uh, for this project, it's a very challenging how we can have the 360 degree for the bus days. Uh, we are not only uh, looking at the, the Customer feedback from the captain. We are also provide multiple channels to the email, to the phone, or to the company online website to gathering everything's information together as provide the one platform. Uh, will be have the one uh, three six degree uh, old looks to the customer solutions. Mm. Thank you, Wang Fei. The next question here will be to um, to both of you. Um, maybe we start with uh, you, Andrew, first. What implementation challenges did you encounter along the way with the acquisition of uh, Dynamics 365, and how did you all put together to overcome these issues? Ah, uh, okay. So the first challenge, I suppose, in Dynamics 365, but it was just the fact that uh, we had very short um, time scales to um, to get this in. Yep. Um, because we had we've had very very um, very short lead times in terms of launching our um, our bus services, um, launching our company, um, and so what we had to do was all pull together to to get this in quickly. Mm -hmm. What really assisted that is the fact that the package was well set up and it's kind of like a turnkey solution, which then MNG just supported us to add on the extra bits that we needed um, to deliver the product the way we wanted it. Um, I suppose the other challenge um, that we had along the way of, um, of the Dynamics 365 is the fact that the experience of the front end user mm -hmm. um, was fairly limited to start with. Mm -hmm. So we had to do a lot of training to actually overcome that. Um, MMG were very supportive with that and mm -hmm. we, we worked together along with support from Microsoft themselves to actually train our staff to a level that they were confident to actually go through the system and run the reports as they, they see, saw fit, as well as getting all the data in there to be able to um, to understand and review what was what was coming out. Mm -hmm. 
So I think that's, that's the challenges we experience. That's very good feedback. So I make sure I'll pass it on to our dynamics product team and engineering team, front end user training. Okay, it's used. And Huang Fei, um, could you share more, some of the learning points? Yeah, uh, <coughs> as the implementation partners, uh, we are gathering all the requirements from a customer. So one of the key points to make the uh, project successful is uh, how we can define a uh, user also know very well how to define the process right to the business process. So that's the uh, go ahead to have the team from the team, not only from IT, mm -hmm. also from business perspective to define the process flow and the overall flow we put in the system to uh, help the customer to achieve this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Wang Fei. Okay, let, let me take a look at um, the audience questions. Uh, okay, one more for you, Andrew. Does Go Ahead Singapore plan to, to or do you already embody an omnichannel model for your customers? Is there, how would Dynamic 365 exist with this? Yeah, so that's, that's quite a tough question. I mean, all, all channel modal is, 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 the, um, is the utopia of, um, of the data world. Yeah. Um, so at the moment, we do have a lot of ways that our, um, our customers interact with us. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a lot of social media platforms, um, Twitter, um, Facebook, um, and in the Singapore market, uh, it's certainly well used, as well as our website, which um, flows straight straight through to um, our CRM package. Um, we are looking at ways to actually take all these all these um, modes of communication with us mm -hmm. and have them all flow into um, one system. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, it is taken a bit by bit, so the website actually flows straight through to our CRM system, but the social media um, forms, yeah. they all go through to the customer experience team, yeah. who then actually have to put that information directly into CRM. But the one stop all is that that data and information is then flowing through to the back end, which allows our management team to be able to review it and take reports based on services, based on times of day, based on mm -hmm. um, even times of the week, just to really understand um, what feedback we're getting yep. and how that really um, impacts how we run our business. Absolutely. I can, I can fully relate. I think I spoke earlier about the Omni Channel, the, the amount of signals, voices, feedback that we're receiving from both customers and partners in field and how we can make sense and translate them into actionable insight that can bring value to the business uh, remains a challenge uh, because there's just so much data out there. there. There is an awful lot of data and it is collating it um, and once you've got it, it's actually interpreting it into a way that is beneficial um, to both yourself and um, to the end user. Yeah, and I believe we can definitely rely on partners like MNG to be able to help us put it all together and um, making it work for us. Um, most definitely. <laughs> I'd hope so. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, one more question here. Um, so what lies ahead for Go Ahead Singapore Customer Service? Um, so what are, the, what are your future plans? We're always trying to uh, move forward. So just off piece, really, we're, we're giving all our bus captains mobile phones, um, which will then allow them to use applications. Um, but even this information will flow, flow through um, the Dynamic 365 um, package that we use. So things like um, when a bus captain is involved in an incident, they'll report it um, through the mobile phone app, which will then flow straight through into our CRM system. Mm -hmm. So instead of at the moment when an incident happens, it's written down on paper, mm -hmm. it's then at, it then goes through to a manager who puts that into the CRM system um, to capture all the, all the data. What will actually happen is the bus captain themselves will put the incident all into the application and then that will flow straight through into our CRM system without the need of anyone to add any input to it. So again, we'll be speeding up processes, we'll be giving our management team more time to be mm -hmm. proactive instead of actually um, doing data input. Um, and we believe that will be real good for our business. Um, we're also, what we want to do is um, use some of the other um, information we have, so mm -hmm. things like our telematic system, our allocation system, 
which are all standalone at the moment, we want them to be able to flow through into, um, into our CRM yep. system, which means that we can then build even more reports up um, and understand our data by pulling it all together into one place. And we, we think that this system is able to do that, um, and we believe that in, the next, in 2019, this is going to be a big focus for us. Yeah, I'm smiling here because it sounds also familiar. I think there's a lot of learning that we can draw. My team can draw from you as well, right. uh, because we are working on the same the same um, focus area. Um, so, with that, um, maybe Wang Fei, do you have anything else, uh, anything to add to to um, yeah how how customer service, um, how we can advance customer service for our customers with the help of Dynamics 365? Yes, just yes. Uh, as uh, Andrew just mentioned, uh, with the Dynamics 365. I have the all uh, information as the one platform. We are also going to introduce the Power BI and the Power Apps as the mobile to make the go ahead as the digital transform journal to more successful. Yeah. Thank you, Wang Fei. Now, at this time, just let me look into the panel to see if there's any more questions that we can take from the audience. Before I ask my next question, I'd like to introduce Andrew's colleague, Gavin Smith, who is joining us for the remaining of the Q&A session. Gavin is the Operations Director of Go Ahead Singapore. It's great to have you here with us, Gavin. Thank you. It's great to be here. Okay. Now, one of the questions uh, we have in, um, from the Q&A box, what is the best customer experience or customer service you have ever received yourself? Um, that's a good question. So uh, recently, uh, I had uh, received some excellent customer service myself after leaving my mobile phone in a taxi. Um, I went to attend a meeting, mm -hmm. uh, realized I didn't have my phone, um, and the taxi driver actually found it in his cab. Um, he returned to the place that I was having the meeting, but unfortunately by that time I had already left. Oh, yeah. So he got the uh, taxi operator company office to email me and find out my new location. And the taxi driver actually drove to my new location uh, immediately and uh, returned my phone to me. So I thought that was a, a really good example of customer service. And it actually links quite nicely with uh, one of our staff, uh, one of Go Ahead staff, recently winning a, um, a Transport Gold Kindness Award which are uh, awards set up by the Kindness Movement of Singapore mm -hmm. to reward um, good customer service. So to win this award, our customer service agent actually returned an, an item of lost property uh, to one of our commuters, and she actually did that outside of office hours, mm -hmm. um, returned it on her way home to the commuter's home address. Well, that's very in inspiring because uh, it seems like that's a gold standard for customer service. Yes, so, so I think it's uh, I think it's kind of representative of the the customer service that we try to deliver. Congratulations, it's a great job on, on your team. Now, now, Gavin, um, there's another question in the chat window here. Um, one of the question was how how has Dynamics 365 impacted the number of customers each for each of your agents um, uh, that they can care for? Um, it's definitely increased the number of uh, people that our, our agents can care for now. Mm -hmm. um, it's made, uh, it's removed a lot of the manual processes that they have to do, and it's streamlined the communication and transfer of data between the different teams and departments within our organization. Um, so it's allowed us to, to respond and analyze this data quicker. Okay. So it seems like it has a positive impact. Yes, definitely. Okay. Now, one more question here. Um, the top three trends, I think, highlighted by CX Network for 2018. Um, one was digital customer experience, the second one digital transformation, the third one around customer loyalty and retention. So as we move into 2019, can you tell us more about how you're preparing for one or more of these trends? Um, I, I could talk around uh, the digital customer service experience, um, so we're trying to improve that. We have uh, quite a number of projects on the go at the moment. Uh, one of these is centered around trying to speed up 
the uh, the information or the access to information that our customers have. Mm -hmm. So we're we're talking to different providers about uh, improving the live data of our bus services that we mm -hmm. show on our um, websites. Um, we're actually also going to give our bus captains mobile phones. Mm -hmm. So they will be able to have access to real-time live information to better inform our customers. And we're also going to um, explore putting QR codes on our vehicles okay. to allow our customers to, to scan the codes, which will then pre-populate um, customer communication forms mm -hmm. and integrate with our Dynamics 365, 365 software um, just to speed up that communication process. That looks like you have you're going to have a very busy year ahead of you. Yes, okay. a very busy year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think one more question just popped into uh, the chat window here. Um, what is your golden rule for the customer experience projects that you talk about in, and you plan for in 2019? Um, the most important thing for us is uh, making sure that our staff are, are fully engaged and on board with what we want to achieve. Uh, our vision as a company is uh, creating a world where every journey is taken care of. Um, so to achieve that, we need our staff to really buy into and understand what we're doing. And we also need to keep them engaged and keep them empowered to enable them to make changes based on the data that they're, they're receiving from our commuters. Well, thank you very much, Gavin, for the insight. Uh, thank you, Andrew, and thank you, Wang Fei, uh, today. Well, I think that brings us to the end of today's Q&A session. Now I'll hand back the uh, session to uh, Barbara, Barbara at CX Network. Over to you, Barbara. I think it's safe to say that it's been a very insightful session with lots of tangible lessons for us to take back to our CX projects. Unfortunately, that is all we have time for today. If your question has not been addressed, please don't worry. We have your details so you can be contacted by the team directly. I'd like to thank our panel of experts for all of their wisdom today, and thank you to all of our viewers for attending. Before you leave today, please do fill in the exit survey and provide any feedback you have for us on this session. Again, thanks for joining, and that concludes today's presentation. <laughs>